Okay, everyone. So in our last videos, we were looking at a market analysis of our banks, looking at macroeconomic variables uh, throughout our bank's footprint. In this video, we're going to extend our analysis and look at stress testing our bank's loans, specifically their charge-offs. Uh, we're going to do this and look at how macroeconomic variables affect the, the charge-offs and then taking those effects and projecting them in time, uh, looking out on these hypothetical Federal Reserve uh, market shock scenarios to see how our bank holds up to shocks to macroeconomic variables. So uh, before we go out and check out those, those, uh, those scenarios, first we need to check out the data we're working with. Uh, I've uploaded a, a file with your guys' charge-offs by bank. Uh, again, I'm going to be using KeyBank for my example. First thing is let's just familiarize ourselves with the data. We've got charge-offs here, which can be thought of as what the bank expects they might be losing on, on their loans or ex expected losses on their loans. So when they don't think that they're going to get money anymore, they charge that off. And so the worse the economy and the worse the, the loans are performing, the higher the charge-offs are going to be. Okay, we've got some quarterly data here going back from uh, the most recent year-end, 2017 quarter four, all the way back to 1990. And then for graphing purposes, I just made a, a separate year variable where I took the left four, I took the left four numbers of this quarter and turned it into a number with this value function. Okay, but real quick, let's just graph these out and see over time how, how KeyBank has performed. You can do the same uh, for charge-offs and for charge-offs as a percentage of total loans. Um, so we'll just grab all this to take your, your bank, control shift, and the down arrow will take you to the bottom of the data and insert a line graph here. All right, we also need uh, an axis. All right, this is not useful. So go to select data here and start from the top. All right, let's do it with the year variable and take it down to the bottom, control shift down. Okay, so let's see the graph. As you can see, it's moving backwards in time. That doesn't look so great. So the way we change that is, I've already got it up here, but you right click format axis and then make the categories go in the reverse order. Now this looks strange, so to put it back over to the left, we put the, the crossing at the maximum category. Then you make it look nice, and uh, we're going to come back to this graph later once we use the scenarios. But if we're looking at this and we're, we're thinking about the charge-offs, um, these charge-offs are growing, spiking a lot during the Great Recession after the financial crisis, as you might expect. We've also got charge-offs growing. Um, there was another recession in 2001, so that's making sense. Uh, so this is sort of what you would expect, and then we're going to be using a regression within Excel to look at how macroeconomic variables affect these charge-offs. So cut this. Um, I made another tab down here and, and I put it put it over here in the tab called charts. So we're going to come back to that um, for now. And you can do the same thing for charge-offs with the percentage of, of total loans. Uh, but for now, we're going to go out and Get the historical macroeconomic variables that we can use to match with this data. One thing I will point out before we go over there is that some of you won't have all the way back to 1990. So here are two good examples. Customers in Legacy Texas only have data back to 2011-12. So just use as much data as you have. Right? Um, make sure that you're not including these zeros um, because it, they weren't operating. Okay, 
let's go get the historical data that's in this uh, the link is in this file so come out here grab the historical data open that up all right and we're going to use domestic data So here again, we also have quarterly data uh, starting earlier than 1990. Um, since we're not going back to 1990 or earlier than 1990, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So I'll delete all this. And then uh, let's wrap this so that we can see what variables we're dealing with here. A lot of these variables are going to be super correlated with each other. Um, right, I mean, we can get real GDP by combining nominal GDP and the inflation rate. Um, the income the income growth is going to be similar. A lot of the interest rates are going to be similar. So we don't need to use all of these. I would say let's start out with nominal GDP, nominal disposable income growth, uh, definitely unemployment and inflation and then out of these interest rates I'm going to grab the mortgage rate since that will apply to especially those who have a lot of mortgage lending going on uh, and then the prime rate which is used as a, as a baseline interest rate for others so I'm going to ignore these for now um, but I'll also take all of these. So stock market index, housing price index, commercial real estate price index, perhaps um, especially important for those of you with commercial lending going on, uh, commercial real estate lending, and then a market volatility index. So I'll grab all those. And then I'm just going to, um, for now, I'll just, I'll just delete these. I'm not going to use them. You could throw them all in there, but uh, because we're going to be doing this analysis in Excel, it'll be easier just to keep the ones that we're going to use. Okay, so this is starting from 1990. This is starting from 2017. We could uh, e create a very similar looking quarter. These don't match up exactly. You can see there's no space here. This one. This one has a space. We could match those up and do a VLOOKUP instead, uh, since it's all very nice and regular throughout time. I'm just going to rearrange the order of these. And so if I take this and Control shift l gets a filter, same as this up here, filter. <clears throat> I'm just going to reverse the order of this. So that we're starting in 4-4, 2017. And now I can just grab all this data, copy it, and I guess I'm, I'm doing hotkeys. Let me tell you what I did here. So I grabbed that data, control, shift, down, and over grabs everything. So copy, bring it over here, and Paste. All right. Mm, I'm going to just get rid of these since these are your banks. I'll just focus on mine for now. Um, not that it matters, but let's make it look nice. Okay. So we've got 2017 data, uh, quarter four. Nominal GDP growth is five. Nominal. So you can double check, but it should it should all match up properly. And now we have our uh, our data set that we're going to use to analyze the effect that these macroeconomic variables have on uh, the charge offs at this bank. All right. I'm going to save that and show it in the next video. Uh, so that I can also explain a little bit of background behind what's going on with this uh, this regression analysis that we're going to use. 
So we'll pick it up from there.